Have you ever thought that in this age of tools, frameworks, and libraries, we tend to not mess around things? We just don't think enough that how things work under the hood. We just think that it's the job of the framework creators or the tools creator. This is fine sometimes, but this is also harmful. It just affects our ability to questioning things. We just simply don't ask why and how. Yeah, tools are good. We don't have to reinvent things all the time, but sometimes it's really helpful to dig deep and see things, how they work in low level. Today, I'm going to touch a very basic topic on how printing to output really works in Gigiterms, STD out. And today, I'm not just going to show you how it works. I will show you how we can mess around with this in Go and Python with real world code examples. And I'm definitely going to use the phrase mess around a lot. So if we print something in the console, it just prints here. But how does this thing actually works under the hood? So I'm just going to touch about how it works in Unix. I am not sure how does it work in Windows. So for a moment, if we just look under the slash dev directory of our Unix system, we will see there are lots of files or technically file descriptors. So we will see that there are three file descriptors named standard error or std error, standard in, and standard out. So these are called file descriptors. Now file descriptors is technically what a file is built on top of. So a stream can be a file descriptor under the hood. A file can be a file descriptor. So in low level, they are called file descriptor. So whenever we print something, it actually, if it's an error, it will go to std error or standard error. If it's not an error, it will go to standard output or simply put std out. So whenever you print something in your terminal, it actually attaches this file descriptor or an instance of this file descriptor to your shell and it just prints the output from this file. So whenever you write something, it goes to this file descriptor, which is called the standard output. So if we type this, we simply see foo because this is attached to a file descriptor. Now let me show you an example. So if we do echo and foo, and instead of just allowing it to print it to a statement, we will just redirect to a file. So we will simply call it log.txt. Now it didn't print it to our output because it didn't go to a standard output. Rather, we redirected it to a file, which is not a standard output file or file descriptor. Now if we cat log.txt, fair enough, we see the full string that we just echoed. Now instead of redirecting it to log.txt, we will just redirect it to tab std out. And magically enough, we see the output. It didn't hide the output from us because it's not a simple file. It's a special file descriptor that is attached to this shell or call it terminal. So if we were to do std error, it will do the same thing. It's a convention that std error normally contains error type of messages and std out normally contains non-error type of messages. One more thing, if we just check that what's underneath dev std out is, it's just a symbolic link to a file descriptor, which is much more descriptive. So it just points to fd slash one and a standard error points to fd slash two. So those are not real file descriptors. Those are just link to a file descriptor, something to keep in mind. So we are developers, right? So let's just show some code examples on how we can mess around with std out. So I have a blank project here. First, I will just show you a Go example. Then I will show you a Python example. So we will create a file main.go, package main. So we will simply print something here and we will run our code. 
and it just prints in our console, which is fine. It should. Now, instead of just printing it into the console or the output, we will just print it into a file. So we will do fprint, where we will pass our file. So let's create a file real quick. So our file will be log.txt, which will reside in the same directory. In white mode, we don't really care about the permissions at this moment. So we have create open the file. Now see what it returns. It returns a file and an error. So for the time being, we don't really care what the error is. We are simply gonna ignore it. So we will provide our file here. And we also don't care about error and bytes written. So let's just create a file for now. And we get our output in the file now. But now if we just mess around things and we just replace this log.txt with another file, or in this case file descriptor called dev standard output and what happens if we run this now it's definitely not going to log.txt but instead it will just print it to the output here we go so this thing is simply instead of writing to our own file it's writing to a different file technically a file descriptor and this file descriptor is by default attached to our shell where we are running the command and showing us the output. Cool. Now let's see a Python example. So I have opened the same project in my PyCharm ID. Let's create a Python file. And we are just gonna make it blank and just open a new file. And we are gonna write to this file. So if we run our Python file, we get this written to our log file, which is expected. Now we are gonna just instead of opening log.txt, we will just open dev.std out, which is attached to our shell again. So we are gonna simply see the output here. And another cool hack is, like this is a simply hack, don't do this. So if we write print, I'm alive. It will simply print, I'm alive, we know. We all know that. So if we see the definition of this print function, we see that it takes arguments to print and it also takes a file here. So if the file is not given, it simply defaults to sys.std out. So what we can do is we can simply specify a file here. We can tell log.txt and it will take a file. It will not it won't take a file name, it will take a file. So now instead of printing, it's just putting things into our log file. And this is not a hack, this is fine. The hack I'm talking about is just replacing the default sysstd.out. So we can simply replace sys.std out with our log file. We have to import it, definitely. So it's now going to our log file instead of printing it to the console. So this is a hack. Don't do this. Use a proper logger instead if you want to a log statements instead of just printing it here. 
but this was just an example on how things work internally. So my point is just to prove that std out or standard output that we call dev slash std out is simply a file descriptor and it treats output as a file descriptor. So you can redirect it, you can pipe it. Same for std in and which is like a core strength of Unix system. So hope that was something helpful for you. This is it for today. See you next time. Have a good day. Peace be upon you.